Four years ago I promised to do this, and I don't like to break a promise, so here it is. When it comes to running emulators on a Dreamcast, you've got a few options. First being to burn CDRs, which isn't ideal. There's an SD card adapter for the serial port, although the reading speeds are said to be slow. Also, I don't have one, and they're sold out. You could opt for hardware modifications, like an optical drive emulator, but if your plan is just to emulate old games, that's a bit overkill. Today I'll be trying many different emulators. There's more out there though, so consider this more of an introduction to the scene. Now let's turn on that Dreamcast and prepare for the loudest sounds known to man. We'll start with this Atari 2600 emulator, Stella DC. Hopefully this is the latest one. Hard to tell without a version number. It has a nice ROM selection menu, sweet and simple. Not much for options, though. To return to the menu during a game, just hold L plus R plus Start. This emulator doesn't support VGA, so the video quality isn't superb, but this is the 2600 after all, so doesn't matter too much. It's not fun to have to swap the chords just to play this emulator, though. Considering that, this is the only emulator on today's list that does not support VGA. Which, by the way, also applies to modern HDMI cables. I'm using Hyperkins. Stella DC runs most games at close to or full speed. River Raid's sound is rough. The severity of this seems to depend on the game. Atlantis and Miss Pac-Man were essentially flawless, with a few minor sound inaccuracies and crackles. Laser Gates, however... Yeah, only play this one muted. In a little bit, we'll be taking a look at an Atari 8-bit and 5200 emulator, which to me serves as a replacement for this one. Next was Intellivision with Intellimess. It uses MESS 0.72 from 2003. Another good, clean menu system. Started with some Astro Smash, and it ran flawlessly. Followed it up with some Thin Ice and... Black Screen. What about Shark Shark? Hmm, that's not right. Pac-Man? More like Pink Man. Zaxxon worked, but the controls didn't. Tried Space Armada. Finally, another game that works! Wait, no it doesn't. Do any games work besides Astro Smash? Okay, Burger Time works. Didn't expect that. I would try more games, but I have no idea how to access the ROM menu, and the online instructions I found don't seem to be accurate. I even button mashed to see if something would come up, but the only thing that does is the mess menu with start plus down. That helped me to learn the control mappings, but that's about it. I don't want to power cycle my Dreamcast too much, so I ended my testing there. We're off to a rocky start here with the last two emulators, but don't worry, because it only goes up from here. This is the excellent ColecoVision emulator, Colum 0.99. This emulator's menus might as well be official. It's to the point, with a little bit of flair. Compatibility is great. I tried a handful of games, and all but one of them ran flawlessly. That game was Space Panic, which at some point had its sound effects stop working. The game was still fully playable regardless, though. In order to return to the ROM menu, just hold L plus R plus Start. This emulator gets a strong recommendation from me. Now for Atari 8-bit and 5200 emulation, with the Atari 800 emulator, V2.0.3. This one requires a little explaining. You'll start on this screen. Press the L trigger to enter the menu. To run a game, go to Cartridge Management, insert cartridge, then select one of the ROMs. When it asks what type, use your best judgment. For example, a 5200 game probably has 5200 in the title. Once that's done, select Run Atari Program, then select the console's BIOS file, in this case, 5200.rom. The game will then boot, or at least attempt to, Games that do work run flawlessly. It's honestly rather impressive. I believe they're running in a full 60 frames per second. Unfortunately though, a ton of games either fail to boot or crash on the title screen. There are some minor sound inaccuracies as well, like with Mega Mania, which is a bit wobbly. But that's really common for this game in 5200 emulators, for some reason, so I'm not complaining. It's not a big deal anyways. To get back to the menu, press the L trigger at any time in-game. 
then you'll need to go through the process of loading a ROM again. This emulator isn't perfect, but I do recommend it. It's hard to ignore the incredible performance for the games which do work. For the NES, we've got Nestor DC Special Edition V1.0. According to the README, 99.9% .9 of the library runs at full speed. Impressive. Got some fancy menus here, that's always appreciated. Screenshots for the games are nice, although this seems to slow the menus down a bit. To make it easier to scroll through, you can skip forward letters by holding L or R. All the games that I threw at this thing worked flawlessly. To return to the menu, hold Start plus Analog Left. This emulator gets another strong recommendation. So, I'm showing this off simply because of how absurd it is. Think this is MSX? Wrong! These are MSX games that have been converted to Sega Master System. Apparently the hardware is quite similar, so the Mad Lads from the SMS Power Forums have converted a bunch of them over. What you're seeing here is a custom self-boot of Crab Emu with a collection of these converted ROMs. This collection was made by Ian Michael, who is a huge name in the Dreamcast homebrew scene. Pretty cool, isn't it? Comes with a nice simple menu as well. Return to it at any time by holding L plus Y. How did the games run? Flawlessly. Of course, let's follow it up with actual Sega Master System and Game Gear games. This is SMS Plus for Dreamcast V0.2 DDD. Yet another great emulator with yet another nice menu. You can return to it by holding L plus R at the same time. I tried a good variety of games from both systems, and they all worked perfectly, with the exception of Zool for Game Gear, which got stuck on the first frame of level 1 for some reason. How about some Game Boy and Game Boy Color using New Boy DC 1.0.3-0.6? That's a long one. Fairly bare bones menu. You'll return to it by holding L plus R plus Start. I tried some Game Boy games, and a few color hacks. All worked great, although when loading in new data, the games do chug just a smidge. Not a problem during active gameplay though. Game Boy Color games are hit and miss. Plenty of them play slower than intended, but not all of them. Conker's Pocket Tales, Men in Black the Series, and Rayman are sluggish. Turok 3 managed to crash my Dreamcast when loading in the first stage. On two different occasions, the emulator failed to reread the CD after returning to the menu, so I had no choice but to reboot the console. I recommend this emulator for Game Boy games, and there is some appeal to the Game Boy Color emulation, with an acceptable amount of playable games. Sega Genesis, using Gens for All Release 4.3. Nice menu, simple yet elegant. You can return to it by flicking the analog stick left, up, or right. Would you believe me if I said everything I tried ran at full speed? Incredible! Speeds aren't everything, though. In Virtua Fighter 2, there was this big black box on the screen, and Rystar got stuck on the Sega logo. I tried 10 games, only those two had issues. Well, the Sonic games, which I know very well, enlightened me to the sound inaccuracies. But knowing how Sega Genesis emulation is, you've probably heard worse from official compilations. Like the Sega Smash Pack, for example, on the Dreamcast. Also, yes, you can in fact save your Sonic 3 & Knuckles progress to the VMU. While this emulator might not have 100% compatibility, it's dang impressive. Full speed 4th gen emulation? I'll take it. Speaking of, what about the Super Nintendo? This is SNES for All B2.1. And, well, at some point this would have been cool. First things first, we've got this strange looking menu full of unusual patterns. Select a game, and it takes you back to the menu. Now you have to press the L trigger to boot the game. No idea why it's set up this way. To get back to the menu during a game, flick left on the analog stick. Once again, I tried 10 games, and each of them had problems. F-Zero played at about half speed. Super Mario 3 had a variety of graphical issues. Still playable, I guess. R-Type 3 was playing great, and I thought, oh finally, a fully working game! But no. The sound quickly started bugging out, and by the time I reached the first boss, it started to flicker constantly. Turtles in Time was a bit slow, but for the most part playable. Can't say how it would fare later into the game, considering the entirety of Krang was invisible. 
Contra 3 crashed when loading the first stage. In Donkey Kong Country 2, most of the sprites were gone, which is weird, since Donkey Kong Country 1 didn't have that problem. Super Mario Kart is slow and has bad flickering. Super Ghouls and Ghosts plays really well, but the sound is painful. There are some options that you can play around with in the menus to get slightly better speeds, but is it really worth it? I mean, would you actually play Super Nintendo like this today? I don't think so. Then there's PlayStation 1 games via Bleemcast. You've probably heard of this software before. It was released retail during the Dreamcast's lifetime. You can imagine the drama that came with that. No menus for this one. You get what you burn, which is one game per disc. I've burned five of them, so I'll briefly go through my experience with those. Quake 2. In-game, it plays at full speed. No graphical issues that I could notice. The cutscenes are corrupted, though. Music is constant, although sound effects such as your weapons and enemy voices cut in and out. This is a common issue for Bleemcast. Only one of the games I burned didn't have this issue, which is Roll Away. This game plays very well, but be warned of the occasional seizure-inducing flashes. Yikes. Croc runs a little slow. Choppy sound. It's kind of playable. Duke Nukem Time to Kill loads about 70% of its textures, with the rest showing up completely white. Sound effects and even the music this time are always cutting in and out. I wouldn't call this playable at all. Lastly, I tried Crash Bandicoot 2, which stuttered very often, and distant textures usually don't load in. Bleemcast is very impressive, though obviously not an ideal choice for playing these games today. I found this compatibility list for Bleemcast online, so I suggest giving that a look before burning any games. Link in the description. You're probably wondering about MAME for arcade emulation. I played around with it a bit off-camera. It's alright. Though you're restricted to mostly 80s games in terms of playable speeds. It uses a very similar menu to the earlier in televisions, and much like that one, I couldn't figure out how to get back to the ROM menu. To prevent excessive power cycling, I decided to leave it at that. And those were the emulators that I tried out for the Sega Dreamcast. The effort behind this scene is outstanding. Sure, by today's standards of emulation, it's nothing special, but quite remarkable for the hardware. If you're big on the Dreamcast, or it's your only console for some reason, then you can get by with this for playing specific older consoles. Realistically though, beyond the curiosity and nostalgia factor, I feel like there's little reason to do this. There are a myriad of options when it comes to emulation stations these days. I've considered this a fun experiment, but it's not something I'd recommend for regular play. So, what did you guys think? Is it worth getting into emulation on Dreamcast these days? And would you be interested in a follow-up video about Dreamcast Homebrew? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to hear more from me in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time!